previously on the Trading Card Preservation Society. Because they did it like that and um, glued it together, all the little crumbs from the Berlin Wall uh, eventually worked their way in between the two layers of cards. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, <laughs> in my relic card, I see a little bit of dust, <laughs> and then all the actual debris is kind of jammed up in the card, never to be seen again. Yeah. Hello, this is Matt F. Uh, bring you a mini episode of the Trading Card Preservation Society. This is Dave's review of the Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies. This was in the middle of our recording for our Best of Awards, and Dave decided to include a Worst Movie of the Year. Um, the, to say the least, the man has some intense feelings about the Hobbit movies. So, I uh, hope you enjoy, and a full, more than two-hour episode of uh, the Trading Card Preservation Society will be out shortly. Until then, this will tide you over. Uh, plays a very critical character. I'm not going to spoil it, but uh, <laughs> Robbie Rist, Cousin Oliver, is in the movie. Awesome. So, uh, <laughs> yes. And you have a worst movie that you'd like to talk about as well. I have a worst movie. This this may be something we we pull out as a, oh yeah, there you go as a bonus feature. But I I have to talk about this. I got to get this off my chest. I love Lord of the Rings. I love The Hobbit. I love Peter Jackson. I've I read The Hobbit when I was a little little kid. I read Lord of the Rings when I was in college. It took me two or three tries to get past Tom Bombadil, but but I did it, and I loved it. I've got the BBC radio wow. play of Lord of the Rings. Uh, I like uh, on 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 cassette tape of all things. <laughs> um, I like Peter Jackson's movies. His early ones are really gross, uh, but The Frighteners is great. Um, Meet the Feebles is that particular brand of of just weirdness that that. I'm glad that I saw it once. <laughs> and uh, he went along to uh, somehow convince uh, a very large corporation to give him a big pile of money to create the Lord of the Rings uh, film version. And he managed to pull it off, and he pulled it off perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then he came back and did The Hobbit, and he picked my one of my favorite actors martin freeman to play bilbo baggins and the first one was a little odd but it was really good and uh the desolation of smog the second film is one of my favorite films even though it's kind of ridiculous as well and then battle of the five armies came out this this december uh, was the first of the series I didn't see uh, a midnight showing for, for some reason. I was actually going to see the uh, preview where you paid some money and got to see all three movies in a row. Yes. But I forgot and forgot to buy the tickets and missed that. So I went and saw that uh, a couple of days before Christmas. And it was the worst experience I have had in a movie theater in years. It the whole thing was a mess, and wow. <laughs> all the people I I told no no trust Peter Jackson he can he can stretch this book out to three three movies it'll be great you'll love it it's gonna be awesome. I apologize to each and every one of you because I was so <laughs> wrong. And just that there were so many problems with this movie. It's just, it's terrible. It, it shouldn't have been wow. made. They should have made it two films. Two films might have worked. Three films did not. Here are among the problems with this film. Number one, the climax happens 
before the opening title pops up. Um, the whole first ten minutes of the film is basically the end of Desolation of Smog, um, where they finish that film. Uh, while I... While the cliffhanger ending in Smog is kind of cool, I mean, a whole gold-plated dragon flying out to go kill everybody is, is a pretty awesome visual. Um, opening it up with the first ten minutes, you know, being all death and destruction and everybody's getting killed and burned up by dragons and then, well, basically spoilers... This whole this whole rant is going to be spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, don't see it. The whole thing's <laughs> terrible. Wait for somebody to uh, cut <laughs> the movies down into a, a single movie edit like they did with uh, the Star Wars prequels and put it on YouTube or whatever because I cannot recommend this movie for anybody unless you just like <laughs> bad CGI. <laughs> So, you know, the whole first ten minutes of the movie, you've got Smog kicking the everything, burning down Lake Town, which, you know, you'd think a town completely built on water wouldn't burn that well, but the whole place is wood. Uh, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch is killing everybody, and the bard is, is trapped in the... in the sell because everyone's being evil to him and the wicked <laughs> Stephen Fry is, is grabbing all the gold and hightailing it out of town leaving everybody else to die and you know they, they basically finish up the, the first film kill the dragon and then boom there's the title screen now now we go into about a half hour of brooding dwarves uh, and brooding elves and brooding people who have no <laughs> homes and everybody's pissed off and everybody's wants something and everybody's being greedy. There is no f fun in this movie at all once you're done with the dragon. It's just pathetic. Um, God, I'm so angry. I can't even think anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you have it. Dave apologizes uh, to everyone who listened to him. God, but uh, <laughs> the worst part about the movie is nothing new happens. Well, no, one new thing happens. Billy Connolly, as a dwarf, rides out on a war pig. That's it. You know, and that's kind of cool, but it's not Dane Ironfoot running out on a war pig swinging his hammer around it's it's pretty blatantly billy Connolly with a goofy beard that has tusks <laughs> somehow running out which is cool i love billy Connolly, and the idea of billy Connolly riding on a war pig kicking ass is kind of cool but that is literally the only new thing in this film all of the heroes they have kind of like a, an avengers for for middle earth show up to to kick sauron or whatever um you know gandalf doesn't do anything uh elrond you know does his typical elf kick <laughs> out of every dwarf that that you see <laughs> uh like he's in god mode which he did in the er in lord of the rings better uh saruman gets his uh out and starts blasting the out of everything which he did in Lord of the Rings better uh, Galadriel does her you know nuclear meltdown where she starts glowing and yells at everybody and scares them off which she did that better in Lord of the Rings so all of these main characters come in to kick ass, and all it is is you remember them doing it better in the earlier films there's nothing new about these cats at all uh, you know, and then the whole crux of the story is, okay, they finally have the gold. Now Thorin gets his, his crazy dragon magic, uh, or no, uh, dragon sickness and gets all greedy and is, is freaking out over the Arkenstone and all this kind of crap. And he's being a 
to everybody and the <laughs> other people are all being <laughs> too because they've got their own gripes and so now everybody's gonna fight each other over bull uh and then they had one of these scenes and this is kind of this is supposed to be like a scene uh like Gollum having his his revelation uh where he's talking to himself it's going to be kind of one of those psychological uh revealing psychological mindset or whatever that you know just psychological bullshit which was done very well in the Lord of the Rings here basically it's kind of like uh one of those drug films from uh high school where somebody takes LSD and the colors get all wavy and <laughs> you got the camera swooping around everywhere it's like whoa man you know LSD as uh as dragon sickness and it's it's really cheesy it doesn't work uh so and that's you know the major emotional moment you know where thorin has realized oh no i'm being a dick. maybe i shouldn't be a dick. oh look now the orcs come so as soon as thorin decides not to be a dick, all the fucking orcs come and then you've got 45 god minutes of just ridiculous cgi fighting which is incomprehensible you don't know what the going on and we've seen this shit before when <laughs> when they storm mordor all this shit happened before better and here you can't tell what the hell's going on and it's quite obvious that 30 minutes in the the filmmakers realized oh shit, we don't know what the hell's going on so now they start flashing back to gandalf who was now basically a reaction image you know, somebody's fighting over here, and then you go back to Gandalf looking serious. More fighting over <laughs> here. And, you know, Gandalf looks over at, at some children being <laughs> by a troll or whatever, and he looks all alarmed. And, you know, basically, you remember the, the scene in The Birds where um, Tippy Hedron sees the guy smoking at the pumps, and it goes... It, it, it flashes to Tippy Hedron, and it's not uh, her reaction uh, in real time. It's like still frames of her horrified face cutting <laughs> okay, back and yeah. forth yeah, sure between I do, yes. Tippy Hedron and the gas pumps about to blow up. That was everything Ian McKellen did in this movie, that scene. So now Peter Jackson is flashing back to <laughs> that alfred hitchcock has done better so we're in a completely different movie now um and the absolute worst part uh we knew that at at the beginning that stephen fry the master of lake town was going to get his eventually and he's got his little toady alfred who is being a to everybody throughout all the movies and uh, alfred is basically Something they did better in The Lord of the Rings with Grima Wormtongue. Brad Dourif does a way better job at being the slimy git than uh, whoever this guy was. So they obviously beat up Stephen Fry pretty harshly. Uh, I think he gets strangled and half his gold falls into the water, and then a then a dragon falls on his head, and he and he dies. But unfortunately, this Alfred character, who's his toady. He lives, swims to shore, and all of a sudden becomes comic relief for the rest of the movie. So every time we get really deep and heavy and people getting killed and, you know, trolls people's faces and, oh no, the Bard's family are in terror, this jack shows up to act like a douche to everybody. Uh, because it's funny, I guess. And mm -hmm. I swear to God, you see this guy more than you see Bilbo, who is the title character. <laughs> That's the absolute worst part of this whole mess, is in the previous films, one of the things I liked about it is there was characterization involved. You got to see Bilbo react with the other dwarves. Bilbo has a character arc where he goes from a 
flitty little, you know, nervous little hobbit to somebody who's willing to stand up to a big nasty orc. Uh, and you get to see some of the personality of, of, uh, all of the dwarves. And all of a sudden we get, okay, now it's battle time. So no more characterization. Half the dwarves you don't even see. Uh, <laughs> there's none of that interaction. And Bilbo is barely there. Now, granted, when he is on screen, he's doing something significant because he is a major driver of the story, but you don't see him. I mean, the movie is called The Hobbit, and 90% of the movie is dwarves being (laughs) or people (laughs) running from trolls or elves running around being snobs. And it's just, uh, you know, can we talk about Bilbo a little bit and uh you know then we get to the climax the the big fight at the end and spoiler spoiler Feely and Keely die we all know this this is in the this is in the books Feely and Keely die the two cute elves uh so they stretch out their deaths to uh basically when Keely dies or is it Feely now, if, when Feely dies, it's basically so Keeley can see him die and go, no! And then when Keeley dies, it's basically so Toriel, who is the uh, female elf who kicks everybody's ass, that was thrown in the uh, thrown in the story, so uh, you know, what's her face from Lost could be yeah, one of the is. stars. It's not actually in the books, right? I've never yeah, that's books, but... that's nowhere in the books. There is no Legolas running around being a yeah. f- video game character. And that is really obnoxious because there's a scene with Legolas which is literally a video game. And it's awful. Where he's bouncing around on a collapsing tower and it's just, just f- stupid. And I know, I, I praise the desolation of Smog. And there's the the barrel scene in that movie is yeah. utterly ridiculous. And everyone in the theaters, every time I saw it, laughed their asses off on that. This is just as ridiculous, <laughs> but it's just stupid. It's not funny. But so when Keeley dies, Toriel goes, no! And it's, you know, can we just have a battle without <laughs> having to drag out this emotional bullshit that is not... <laughs> have anything to do with the story and then finally by the end of the movie i'm just like we feel thorin already i'm sick of him they have the big white uh what the name azog uh whatever the the big orc that turned out to be the big bad guy in the whole series who has this blood feud with thorin for some reason they finally have their big showdown and it's basically ice dancing um <laughs> which i don't know man <laughs> it's and then so, they drag that out you know thorin has to die at some point and then uh as soon as you see big goblin dude fall down under the ice you know oh shit, now they're gonna drag this out and then they have the dumb scene where he's looking down on the ice and azog's body floats by and it's like okay blink your eyes there's more coming we know he didn't die like that so let's just get and it's just uh and then he dies which is a situation for all the orcs to go no and it's just quit quit with this emotional bullshit Damn it, you didn't have to do it in the original ones. Uh, don't do it here. And uh, the the enduring image. You know how you have an enduring image from a movie that just sticks in your mind? The mm-hmm. enduring image for me for this movie is when all the orcs are huddled around Thorin's body. Oh no, the king is dead. Martin Freeman and... Uh, Ian McKellen are just sitting on some stone steps looking really down and embarrassed like god how did we f*** this up 
<laughs> that's that's the image that is going to remain with me with this Whoa. dumb film. And even the, the ending of it, when he gets to go back home, finally, he goes through all this bullshit. He gets a little bit of gold. He has his adventures. He gets to go back home. And they have to put the bit in the uh, from the book where Lobelia Sackville Baggins basically steals all his stuff. So you're ending the whole series on another downer. And I know it's in the book. It's kind of funny when he goes off on Lobelia. But, you know, the last film of this whole mess, I mean, unless they decide to do the Silmarillion or whatever, uh, the last image is him finally getting home and then having to deal with this bull****. <laughs> so the whole movie is just a big downer. After the after the dragon gets killed, it's just like everything just is all up and let's just get it over with and go home. And then maybe put in our DVDs of the extended version of Lord of the Rings and move the f*** on. So... Well, so I was going to go see this movie tomorrow, so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, if you are as invested as I am, I mean, I just, I'm, I've, I'm staring at a picture of Martin Freeman holding Sting on my wall right now. But, and I, it just disappointed me so terribly. Uh, but I mean, hey, you're going in with, uh, no expectations <laughs> now, so you might actually enjoy it. And honestly, <laughs> honestly, if I had gone to that, uh, big film festival where I just watched all three in a row, I might have enjoyed it because I would mm. have gotten all that other, uh, stuff that I like in there with, the. Uh, you know, with Bilbo interacting with the, with the dwarves and the interesting fight scenes and gold-plated dragons. I, I would have gotten all that, so maybe this would have tied all that up together. But by itself, <laughs> that's what I say. <laughs> the problem that I have is that I, I really haven't watched The Lord of the Rings since the original trilogy, since these new Hobbit movies have come out, so... But what I think yeah. is going to happen is that I'm going to rewatch Lord of the Rings and I'm going to be like, well, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't <laughs> make sense. Because, like, the interactions between, let's say, Legolas and Gandalf, yeah. like, now that you've included Legolas into the this battle, the ultimate battle of history, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, do these characters, these characters should be interacting differently in the original trilogy, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I yeah. always thought the Ho I always thought the Hobbit was a very simple story in the sense of like it wasn't the grandiose, you know that the, that made the three movies. Like yeah, it's it's a simple story in that it's just an adventure. Yeah, it's not oh we have to save the world. Right, exactly. That's what yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. And so I, I've gotten yeah. the the feeling like these movies. You know, that they're all... I've only seen the first one. I, I got the second one for Christmas, so I haven't seen yeah. The Desolation of Smog. That, and so, that I love. I mm -hmm. will watch that movie anytime. Yeah. This one, not so much. But so, uh, uh, well, there may like, not be as much uh, conflict by going back and watching The Lord of the Rings uh, with the whole Legolas thing, even though Legolas yeah. should not have been anywhere near this movie. Right. I think Orlando Bloom just basically pestered Peter Jackson until he let him <laughs> in the movie. But, um, I don't think Legolas, oh, don't you, don't I don't you think, think Legolas Peter Jackson... and Gandalf interact at all, to be honest. Yeah. Cause they're, Oh really? Off. Oh, I think they're, they're kind of off doing their elf things and Gandalf is off, you know, skulking around, uh, um, what the hell's his name? The well, Sauron basically yeah. his castle. So they're off doing different things. Um, I mean, I think Peter Jackson was very worried that without Legolas, like uh, that piqued my interest in it. Like, oh, Legolas is in this. This is going to be yeah. That's uh, Legolas you know? was in there to to get people yeah. co to come back and see Legolas, but yeah. you know, I don't think he he belonged in there. He was no. just kind of, and that's the biggest thing, 
is all the stuff that he changed in the first two movies kind of comes home to roost here yeah. because it just all gets too ridiculous and too silly. <laughs> but uh, I will say Sylvester McCoy, uh, Seventh Doctor, Radagast the Brown is a bad <laughs> mother. <laughs> <and> <laughs> he is he has jumped uh, greatly in my estimation uh, since this trilogy came out even though oh. his signature move is to uh go cross-eyed and mutter to himself when he's doing his <laughs> magic spells but uh with the bird <laughs> all over his face but uh yeah it's worth it just for for radagast because he does have an amazing moment in this film i will say that but oh, that okay. moment has happened before as well <laughs> so <laughs> again there's just nothing new it's just all rehashed old shit after the dragon wow. bit but uh you know maybe i'm being harsh because everybody else <laughs> I've, I've talked to has liked it so I've, i don't know maybe You're i'm just a gripe right yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll definitely have to make that a mini episode <laughs> <laughs> heavy on go. the bleeping we'll bleep some stuff up yeah bleep oh. some mother <laughs> Peter Jackson, you ruined my life! <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay, so... Um... <laughs> oh, hey, man. we got a bonus episode. Yeah, right, there you go. 